In this video, we'll create the schema and resolver for fetching a cart by ID. We can see here we have a query in our GraphQL schema, and we are passing ID of the scalar type ID that returns the cart. And this cart type here is just something that we've mocked in our GraphQL API. So in this video, we will create a few different things. The first one will be to define a GraphQL schema. The second, well, that will be to define the actual Prisma schema. And then third, we will migrate the database. And then we will lastly uh, define the GraphQL resolver. So quite a few things to cover in this video. Um, and as you can see in this file, this is where we will write the actual GraphQL schema. So this cart doesn't actually include anything that we might want to use on our front end. So things like the subtotal, well, this might be of the type money. We don't have a money type yet, but we want to provide a subtotal for our cart. So we can get what the subtotal of all of the items, you know, multiplied by their uh, quantity. And then we can kind of just display that to the user, the person shopping on our site. Then lastly, um, we'll also include kind of an items here and we'll return a non-nullable uh, array of different cart items. Um, and we don't have the cart item type or the money type just yet. So let's go ahead and actually define this right now. So money, what things will we have here? Well, I think this would be really nice if we showed a formatted string amount. So imagine this was something like uh, $5. Okay, and then the amount, well, the amount would be in cents. So um, we can return that to the to the API um, as a int here as well. So you know, this could be like, whatever. Further on down, we'll need to actually define um, the cart item. So maybe as we put this here and we say, okay, we'll declare a new GraphQL type, which is called cart item, then it will have an ID, and that will be of the ID scalar type, then we'll have a name, which will be of type string, which is non nullable. That's what these kind of bangs are for the exclamation mark here, that tells GraphQL that these fields are non nullable. Description, well, this will be a null field. It's not always the case that you might want to provide a description to your cart item. So we'll leave that as non nullable in our case here. Then we actually want to have a unit total. So the unit total will be the actual cost of the item in the cart as one, okay? Um, and then we want to have a line total, which will return the money type as well. So we are reusing that money type here, and that will be the um, that will be the unit total, or in our case, in the database, database, we'll store it as price times or multiply that by the actual quantity. So that's how we'll calculate the line total. Then we actually need the quantity itself, and we'll make this a non nullable int as well. And then lastly, we'll have an image, which will be a string and we'll make that nullable. Um, so you can provide an image. Um, and you know, you don't have to provide an image, but we can pass that on if we want to. So now let's open the Prisma schema. Um, and here, this is where, where we need to kind of declare what the structure looks like in our database for our cart and our cart items. So Prisma is really cool. It's similar to GraphQL in a sense, well, the schema definition language, um, where you can kind of say model cart and then you can add all of your different fields here. And I'm using a VS code plugin, which is what gives me all of this kind of intelligent uh, kind of type ahead and uh, type safety stuff. So this is really cool. Um, check the notes for this video and you can install that uh, plugin if you need it. Um, and then default, uh, we'll specify here that we want a UUID as the default ID. Now items, well, this will be an array um, of cart item. Now we have said that this cart just has ID and items. But if we look on over to the GraphQL schema, we have an ID, which is fine. Then of course, we've got items, but we don't have total items and we don't have subtotal. Well, we're not going to store that in the database because we can calculate that with GraphQL. And we can provide that to the GraphQL resolver for those root types. And I'll explain that uh, in a little bit more in depth when we get to it. But we don't need to store that in the database, so we won't. Um, so next, yeah, we'll have to declare the model for the card item. Um, and then this here will be, uh, this will contain a string and that will be uh, have a default value. And again, this will be the UUID. 
Then we'll provide a name, which is you know, nullable. Um, and then description, we'll say this is a string. And we'll add a question mark at the end here. And that kind of tells Prisma that this is an optional field. So we get the type safety when working with those generated types. Um, and then the price, well, this will be of a type int. We'll store that in the lowest amount, so cents or pence or whatever your currency is. Um, quantity, well, this will be int as well. You could go as far as saying there's a default value for this, and you could say that the default value is uh, one, but I'm gonna leave that out because we're gonna manage that through the GraphQL API. Um, and then lastly, we'll add image as the last field. Now it's given us some red squiggly lines and that's because we haven't connected the model to the cart item. Okay, so the cart model and the cart item model, they reference each other in the way that we have items as an array of cart items, but we haven't actually told cart item, okay, this is your value for the cart ID. So we can do that by saying, we'll store the cart ID as a string, and then we can connect the relation here. And we can say, okay, well, let's use the special, this looks like a directive in GraphQL, but in Prisma, it's just a way to kind of note to the schema some special behavior. And in this case, the special behavior is to create a relation. So the relation, we'll have to specify the fields that manage that relation, so it's cart ID. And we need to say, okay, well, that cart ID references on the cart model a certain field, and you know this will be the ID field. Then um, I'm gonna specify it on delete. So if we delete a cart, we wanna cascade that and delete the child records. Lastly, we need to specify a unique um, value, we need, to we need to specify that the ID in the cart ID is, is unique. So we can use the special at at ID, then we can provide an array here. The cart ID and the cart item ID, those are kind of unique together and they're kind of constrained to one another. So all of our errors have gone, I will save that. The TypeScript plugin will format this um, similar to how Prettier, GoFMT does it. This will kind of just make the file look a little bit nicer for us. So that's really, really cool. Um, and if I just open up package.json now and I go to our scripts here, you'll see I've got a few different scripts here. And the first one is going to be the CodeGen script. You can see here we have a few different scripts. Uh, the most important one here is dbGenerate. This is a script that we'll need to run um, in order to generate our types. So let's run, let's try this out. npm run dbGenerate, and then we'll get some feedback here that Prisma has successfully generated um, using the Prisma client. And this has kind of created all the types that we need. So it's really cool. Now, if you remember previously, we used the code gen command to generate some um, types in TypeScript from our GraphQL schema. So if we load this file up, you can see we've got all of these different kind of types that have automatically been generated using the GraphQL code generator. Well, I wanna take this a step further now and I wanna connect what we have in here um, to our Prisma schema. So I'm going to open the codegen.yml and then inside of the conflict block here where we've got our context type, I actually now want to go ahead and add some additional config. So here we'll provide a mapper type suffix and we'll say this is model. I'm now going to map the cart model inside of our schema to the Prisma cart type. And we can do that by just using the name of the Prisma client library. And then at the end, we can grab that exported cart type. I'm now gonna do the same for the cart item. So we've now got cart and cart item inside of here. Now inside of the terminal, if we run npm run code gen, and we open up that types.ts file, we can now see at the top here that we have cart imported as cart model, cart item imported as cart item model, and that model is coming from the suffix that we added to the config, and that is coming from the Prisma client library. Now, if we take that and we do a find all, we can see here the actual resolver types. Well, they are resolving now to the Prisma model. And that's really important when it comes on to actually writing the resolver because we will be working with the actual type that's in the database and we'll, we will be returning in a different type, the type that's returned from the GraphQL schema. So to give us kind of full end-to-end -end type safety, it's important that we do this inside of our GraphQL code generator so it knows about the type and how that looks and how it works. So that's really cool. The next thing we need to do is obviously migrate our database. So we've got these fields in a database. We then need to write the resolver for our GraphQL query. 
So I'm going to open package.json and because we'll be doing this quite a bit, I'm going to actually create a new script in here. I'm going to call this db migrate and inside of here we'll run prisma migrate and I'm going to pass dev at the end here. Calling prisma migrate dev will actually create a SQL migration based on our prisma schema. It will apply it to the database and generate our client. So now inside of the terminal, if we run npm run db migrate, I already have some data in the database, so I will choose to reset the database entirely, but we can see here that it was able to connect to our database mydb at localhost 3307, which is the local running Docker database that I have open and running inside of a different tab. So you'll need to make sure that you have Docker running and Docker Compose is all working. Then we need to actually give a migration name um, here for our resolver. So I'm just going to create uh, an initial cart setup as our migration name. Call this whatever you like. This will be so you can easily reference this later so you know what is this is called. Now if we open the file explorer and we head on over to the Prisma folder, we can see here now that we have a mig migrations folder and inside of here with a timestamp, we have a mig migration SQL file. And this contains all of the different SQL that's needed to recreate our cart and the cart item. So this is really cool. This is now gonna be kind of pushed to Git. It's gonna be version controlled. This file won't change. If we wanna change anything in our database or inside of our Prisma schema, we'll then create another migration. So it's able to apply that and kind of perform uh, changes throughout our database in a safe way. So this is a really good practice using these. If we head back to package.json, we can also see that we have a command here called DB Studio. And I'm just gonna run this very quickly and show you what this looks like inside of the browser. So this is using the Prisma Studio and here we can see the two different models that we have. We have cart and cart item. If I go to cart, if we had some records, we'd see it here. And inside of here, we can add some records and we can connect different relations. So we don't need this just yet, but we'll need this in the future when we kind of wanna check what's going on in our database making sure that everything is working as it should be. So next, inside of our API route for our GraphQL yoga server, we need to create a resolver for the cart query. So for our resolver, let's update this to be async. And then inside of here, we'll declare a new const and we'll call this cart. And using the await keyword, we'll await prisma.cart, and then we'll use the find unique method that allows us to pass a unique value. So here we'll say it where the ID, and this ID will match what's passed in to the GraphQL arguments, and this is shown here. We can see if we hover over that ID is of type string, and if we go to Prisma, we can see that is also expecting the type string for the ID value. Then, if there's no cart, we want to assign to the cart variable a new cart. So we can do that by passing await prisma cart and then create and then we can pass it the data. And now we can see that we can pass ID and items. Well we don't know what any items are so here we'll just pass the ID. Then all that's left to do is return cart. So this is the query for cart. When we call cart pass an ID it will First check our database to see if we have a cart where that ID matches. If it doesn't match, we'll go ahead and create it and then we'll return from Prisma to GraphQL the cart. Now if we open up the schema for our GraphQL schema here, you'll see here that the cart has a non-nullable total items field and it has subtotal. Now us returning inside of here, that's not going to resolve and correctly match the type that's expected of GraphQL. So for the root type cart, we actually want to update the resolver for items. And here we're going to use something special from Prisma. So let's have a look at that. The first argument of our resolver here will actually be the parent type cart. So we can get the ID of that cart. And then from the third argument, we can fetch the Prisma client from the context. Now let's create a new variable and we'll call this items and we'll await prisma.cart and we'll do the same again as what we did above. I'm gonna call find unique, and here we'll pass the ID, and then we'll call dot items. Then we can return items for our cart resolver. 
The next thing to do inside of where we have items is actually to return the total items. So we actually want to perform the same logic to get our total items. Now, inside of here, we're making the same request to Prisma. Now, the one thing that I want to point out here that using find unique is actually special within Prisma. This handles an M plus one problem. So you can imagine where you call cart, if we get the items and total items, well, Prisma is going to call out to the database twice, you'd think. But because we're using find unique, this automatically handles and batches those requests for us. So we don't need to use any external libraries like data loader if you've read about this problem with GraphQL before. Now, instead of just returning the items array, if we hover over total items, we can see that there's an error. And that's because the card item as an array is not assignable to the type number because the total items field, well, that inside of the GraphQL type, that needs to return an integer. So what we'll do here is iterate through all of our items and we'll reduce all of those items into one single integer. So using the reduce method in JavaScript, so as the first argument, we'll make this total and then the current value, well, we'll call that item. Then the function that simply returns the total plus item quantity. Otherwise, we'll make that one if no quantity exists and we'll return zero as the initial value for our total accumulator. We'll next create the subtotal resolver and we can see here that this returns the type money. So we need to calculate the format amount and the amount itself. If we head on over to our resolver now and we copy what we have above and instead of just reducing all of these items, we need to return an object. We need to return the formatted amount. So this could be this, and then we need to return the amount itself. For the amount, we can do something similar to what we did above by reducing all of our items and getting the quantity and the total and returning the overall amount. I'm going to declare a new variable here and we'll call this amount. Then we'll iterate through all of our items and we'll reduce that into a single value. Instead of just adding the current total and the item quantity, I actually want to add the item price multiplied by the quantity. And the fallback here will make that quantity a zero. And we'll call less this to zero as well for the overall amount if there isn't any price or quantity defined. Then we can simply return amount here. So this should be everything running except our formatted amount. We'll need to use a library to calculate this on the server and we'll be using the library currency formatter. So instead of the terminal, I'll go ahead now and I'll install currency formatter. And I'm also going to install as a dev dependency, the currency formatter types. With that now installed at the very top of the file, I'm gonna go ahead and import currency formatter from currency formatter. Just above our resolvers, I'm now going to declare a new variable here. And this constant will have the value of USD for the currency code. Then back where we have our formatted amount, if we now update this, and here we can run currency formatter, and we can pass format, then we can pass it the amount, but we'll need to divide that by 100 because we have the lowest amount. So we need to divide that here. Then in the options, we can pass the currency code and we can pass that variable that we declared above. So now all that's left to do is run our server npm run dev. Now, if we head on over to our server at localhost 3000 slash API, and we have a look inside of the documentation, and we have a look at our field here, cart, we can see that it now returns this cart type, and we have the updated fields. If we now write a cart query, and we pass the ID one week GraphQL, here we can return the ID, total items, and we can fetch the items themselves, and any additional fields here, then we can fetch the subtotal, and we'll check the formatted amount and the overall amount. Now, if we execute this query, we can see here that we've returned from our database a new cart. Because the database didn't contain one week GraphQL as a cart, it created that. If we run this again, it will fetch that same cart now from the database. If we open up Prisma Studio and we now refresh, we can see here that we have one entry, one week GraphQL. And we don't have anything else. We don't have any cart items. Nothing else is included here just yet. We'll add items to our cart in the next video.